I cheated on my husband with a co-worker and I regret it. I cried and begged him to take me back. He told me he couldn't be with me because I broke him. I don't know if this is the right place to put this on, yet the title of the group fits the situation I placed myself in. I am posting because my therapist suggested that I should just let it all out and oddly enough Reddit seemed like a place to do it. So here it goes, I, 42 female, cheated on my husband, 42 male. Three years ago, it destroyed my family and I regret it every day. My husband and I got together when we were 19. We were nowhere near each other's first and for 22 years I thought we were happy. Sure, he has his moments when his temper gets the best of him, but he's the kind of guy that wears his heart on his sleeve and takes a lot of crap, and when he blows up, he will grieve everything that has been bothering him and I understand. I do the same thing and tend to, to say some heartless things towards him out of anger and he never held it against me. Our life was great. Of course he would love to have more. He would try every day but as a stay-at-home mom of five, three girls and two boys. I get tired and he voices opinions when we don't have sex and I found it to be annoying. Thinking back, we could have had sex more often. Yet, he does help around the house. He works 60 hours a week and makes sure I sleep in on weekends and I wake up to a nice clean house and breakfast. As the years went by and the three eldest began to head off to college, I was feeling that empty nest syndrome. I was bored going a bit stir-crazy. I still had my two boys, but they were in junior high and didn't need me really. My husband saw this and encouraged me to get a job. In hindsight, I should have told him no. Should have gotten a hobby. Should have done a lot of things differently. My husband is a bit stocky, slight overweight, but handsome. As for me, I see saw between 150 to 210, depending on the year. When I started working again as a customer service rep, I was 160 and I felt great. I haven't been in the workforce in 21 years and it felt good to be back working. As the months went by, I began hanging out with the younger 25-year-old co-workers from the office that was encouraged by my husband because I lacked female companionship. I used to shove him to go hang out with his co-workers, so it was only fair that I did the same and those girls put ideas in my head. They made me think that I could do better, made me think that my husband wasn't sexy enough, made me think that I was held back. Even one of my male co-workers stated that my husband is a beta pretending to be an alpha and I ate it up. At the time, I thought my husband was all bark and no bite. Yes, I used to see him argue with people who would run their mouth. Had no problem stepping up to them, but I never saw him got into a fight. I don't know where that came from. I loved him. I honored him. In return, he honored me. All of our friends always told me how lucky I was to have him, and I did felt lucky. Yet somehow, they all got in my head, and I guessed my love for him. This little nudge kept going every time my co-workers and I talked, and eventually I began flirting with the same male co-worker who called my husband a beta. He was the same age as me, and he was handsome, physically fit, and as the weeks went by, one thing led to another. He made the first move, and I just went with it. We were having sex every chance we got. I felt younger, desired, and I treated my husband like crap. I denied him sex, poke fun at his weight, even tried to make him think that he was crazy when he questioned our relationship. I had no clue where that came from. Thinking back, I don't know why I was acting like that. I don't know who that person was. I realized how bad it was when my husband crushed a glass cup with his bare hands staring at me with hateful eyes during dinner. You have a hickey. He spat while he wrapped up his palm and left to urgent care. My sons looked at me in shock. The eldest of the boy's eyes turned beet red before he ran off. I called my lover and yelled at him, and he told me that he wanted to mark his territory, and I felt disgusted. It was the first time I felt remorseful about what I'd done. It was after midnight when he came home and looked at me seriously in the eyes and asked how long I wanted to deny it. Wanted to tell him no, but I saw it on his face. So I told him four months. Did you suck his D? I said nothing. He walked around me, only to stop short by my ear and said low enough for me to hear. I want to divorce you effing slut. I was so angry that he called me that he never talked to me like that before, and all I could do was cry, especially when I noticed our boys staring at me at the foot of the stairs. They looked at me with such rage, and I was angry at him for doing that out in the open. I should have been angry with myself, should have been disgusted at myself, but I had these blinder on and my husband instantly checked out. It was like a light switch, and just like that, his love for me was gone. My female co-workers rallied behind me, convincing me that I was making the right choice and I could spend more time with my lover, and I bought into it. 
I didn't want the separation period. My husband moved out of the house and into an apartment a half mile away. My sons were treating me like crap, and my daughters refused to speak to me. My lover began coming over to the house despite my protesting, but he just came over. This infuriated my children, and he refused to leave the first time my soon-to-be ex came over to pick up the boys. My lover was more physically fit than my soon-to-be ex, but he just smiled at my lover. Not yet, was what he told him with a smile. Not yet, but soon. When they left, I was so angry at my lover, I told him that what he did was uncalled for and he just ignored me, only to yell at me when he had enough and it scared me. My lover soon began to tell me what to eat, what to wear, making these hurtful comments when no one was listening and I let it happen. When the divorce got finalized, we negotiated 50-50 straight down with a payment plan to buy us half of the house. We had shared custody, but the boys wanted to live with him. I haven't seen my eldest daughters in a long time. They don't return my phone calls. I only found out one of them was in a serious relationship when he mentioned it. It was surreal when it happened. Watching him sign the papers caused so much pain in my chest. When he took his ring off and placed it on the paper, I felt the ball in my throat. And when he left, I realized I never apologized to him. I grabbed the pen and just stared at the ring at that moment. I realized how much I ducked up. I destroyed my marriage, my relationship with my children, and I think I was in an offensive relationship, and I just cried. I couldn't breathe. I was too incoherent, but eventually I signed it. A week after my divorce was when my lover hit me for the first time. I was telling him about my day, and I bumped into the nightstand and knocked over his phone. He gave me this look, slapped me and called me clumsy. I called my ex and the first thing he asked was, does he touch my children? I told him no, and he just hung up. I cried so hard that night. Soon my lover got comfortable using his hands. It went on for two months and at the time, I felt like I deserved it. My ex never laid a hand on me. My lover did, and to me, it was karma. It only stopped when he hit one of my daughters who was home from college due to the pandemic. She was the only one who wanted to stay at the house. The two older ones stood at their dad. One phone call from her and my ex walked into the house, offered my lover a free hit before beating him into a bleeding pulp. My ex was stone-faced the entire time. No emotions. I had to beg to stop him. He looked at our daughter's bruised face and asked her what hand did he use to hit her and he broke his right hand by stomping on it. When it was over, my ex took him and dragged him outside. Not one he looked at me, not once acknowledged me. He took him to the hospital and told the ER that my lover fell down a flight of stairs. My husband stood by my lover's side. I did not know what they spoke about, but the following day my lover quit the job and left me. I kept working and my ex began screwing some of my single friends. Even a couple of my co-workers, one of them was the girl who convinced me to cheat. I only found out after the fact when my co-worker was stressing over him, bragging to the other girls how he blew her back out, constantly asking me about him and why he won't return her phone calls. It hurt me to know that he was doing that. I think he was doing that on purpose. I dated a few guys, but it never lasts. I'm a single mother of five children. That seemed to push men away. Then there was the Looking back, even with my lover, none of them could satisfy me the way my ex could, which made me wonder why did I allow this to happen. I was happy. How did I let myself get manipulated? I don't understand why. During this time, my house was always quiet. My boys were either locked into their room or at their dad's. My daughters, with the exception of my third born, refused to talk to me and it was hurting. My ex saw this and he conducted a family meeting. He had all the kids in the house and I was happy to have all of our children under the roof, but the majority didn't want to be there. He began telling the kids to talk to me and my youngest called me a whore. This shocked me, it hurt me so much and my ex slapped him right in front of me. Have I ever called your mother that? He barked and our son shook his head. Your mother takes care of you. She loves you and you will respect her. What happened between us has nothing to do with you. All of you will start respecting your mother. Do I make myself clear? He looked at all of our children and it spoke volumes and my relationship with my children began to improve. During the second year anniversary of our divorce, we were civil, we laughed, talked. He constantly came over to the house to fix things to talk about the kids. And for a while I had my husband back and I leaned in but he shoved me and said no before walking away. A month later, he began dating our youngest teacher. She's 10 years younger than him and they have a lot of common interest. She's extremely attractive and I tried to be civil while they were dating, but it hurt seeing him looking at her the way he looked at me. How he touched her, 
made her laugh. She was the center of his attention and I understood why people envied us. Why they kept telling me how lucky I was. That devotion. Why I never noticed it. I had my nervous breakdown when I heard that they were expecting and they were getting married. I woke up with him by my side, wiping the stray strands from my face, and I just cried, begging him for forgiveness for destroying our family and he said nothing. He just let me talk while holding me. He visited me every day, only leaving my side to talk to his fiance, and she even came over to check up on me. I don't deserve their sympathy. Her kindness, she even found me a therapist that they paid for. My therapist was blunt to say the least. She said I was having a midlife crisis and instead of talking to my husband, I allowed these young women to manipulate me. She explained that they wanted to sabotage my marriage because they was single, most likely will never marry, and saw me as easy prey. Misery loves company. And the fact that the main instigator screwed my ex-husband only proved it. After a few months of sessions, she saw how I am still struggling with it, and she suggested to post on Reddit, create a throwaway account and let the pain flow. It is therapeutic and a unique alternative to group therapy. My ex-new wife is a lovely person. She comes over a lot to check up on me. She talks to me, makes sure I'm okay, and as much as I wanted to dislike her. I can't. She's too nice, and their twin boys are beautiful. My ex also comes around to make sure I'm okay. If I'm eating, telling me that despite what happened, I will always be the mother of his children, and he will always be there for me as a friend. He even came over last Saturday and let me sleep while he cleaned up the house and had breakfast waiting for me. That made me break down and cry. I miss him so much. I miss my husband. I miss my best friend. Till this day, I don't understand how I was so easily manipulated. I'm so alone. My kids are here, but we're not as close as we used to be, but they're here. Yet the one person I want the most is not. He moved on, and I'm the reason why. Someday, I will move on with my life. But for right now, I deserve this. I deserve everything. Edit. I spoke to someone in the messages and I wanted to set the matter straight. I wanted to talk about what my ex went through, but I felt like it wasn't my place to talk about his pain. I tried to make amends countless times, but he wanted nothing to do with me. It didn't help that my affair partner didn't want to leave me alone. No matter what I did, he just wouldn't leave me alone. I felt trapped. During the affair, I was in this weird haze. It's hard to explain. It was like an out-of-body experience. That day was supposed to be the last time and he left a mark on me. I remembered when I begged my ex to give me another chance. It was days after he found out. He just looked at me and walked away. Only three times he spoke to me. When he tried to be civil when signing the divorce papers. When I called him when my partner hit me and the day after he nearly finished my affair partner. On that day, he unloaded everything on me. As I mentioned before, he has a habit of letting everything fester before he explodes. He yelled at me about my stupid choices, about destroying him, how he doesn't have the luxury to mourn our marriage because he needs to be strong for the kids, and I just cried because I broke this man, this strong man who would have tried to find a way to freeze hell if I asked him. I apologized, but he didn't want to hear my apology. He told me that my affair partner will never bother me again and left. It took a year before we became conversational. Before that, he wanted nothing to do with me. When he started fooling around with some of the women I knew, I just let him be. I knew why he was doing it, and I felt it was well-deserved. It was after that family meeting when he began acting civil for the kid's sake, and during that time, I truly realized what I destroyed. After the family meeting, little by little my kids began to talk to me again. My youngest took the longest, but I tried. Oh God, did I try to make amends with the kids. I needed to fix what I broke with them. They were my top priority. As the kids saw my efforts, they slowly opened up, but not as much. During that second year, seeing my kids laughing in the house while my ex-husband joked around or helping around with chores, cooking on the grill and dancing with the girls, I thought that if I made the effort, showing him how much I was sorry that I I could win him back. I did everything that I could. Asked for couple counseling. To start over, wearing every outfit he bought me. His favorite perfume. Had my hair just how he liked it, but he just ignored me. That's why I tried to kiss him that day. I thought there was a moment, but he stopped me. I cried. I pleaded. And he just looked at me. He told me that he couldn't be with me because I broke him. He will never kiss me because I had another man in my mouth. He will never hold me because I had another man touch me. He will never sleep with me because I allowed another man to sleep beside me. I pointed out the women he had been with after our divorce, and he made it clear that it happened after our divorce. What I did was during our marriage, your body and heart belongs to me, just like my body and heart belongs to you, and you destroyed that. I'm trying to just be his friend, but it's hard.
I've been married to this man for over 20 years and I ruined it in six months. For what? A midlife crisis? For my desperate need for female friends? An urge to want to fit in? I look back and I do not know who that person was. Everything was out of character for me. My thirdborn understood, and if it wasn't for her being there for me, I would have ended my life. She kept me sane. Kept me safe. I had no idea she was home that day. Usually the mistreatment happens when the kids are gone or while we're driving to and from work. I always dread it when they leave. Yet I allowed him to do that to me because I felt like I deserved it. That night I stood up for myself. I told him to leave. And he didn't like that. Not one bit. When he hit me and pinned me against the wall, my daughter appeared out of nowhere and jumped on his back when he hit me again. He flipped her over and back slapped her. I hit him and ran into the garage with my little girl. He was knocking hard on the door and she called her father. He practically broke through the garage door when my ex arrived and I had to stop him. Otherwise, my ex would have ended him. His new wife is a godsend for him. She allowed him to love again allowed him to be himself again. I didn't want to be a part of his new life, but she insisted. She was also in an offensive relationship before meeting my husband. She wanted no animosities and trust me. She made it clear that she has claws and is not afraid to use them if I overstep. My children adore her. She was the English teacher to the majority of them after all. I just had these moments of overwhelming guilt that is crippling. Yes, I still work for that company and I eventually became a manager and fired those women. I knew all of their dirty secrets, so getting rid of them wasn't an issue. I just miss what I had, that's all.